TTL Flash is a great, easy, quick way to get into Flash for nature photography. But if you really want to know what's going on behind the scenes, you have to get a little bit nerdy, and that's what I'm going to do today with three pretty esoteric questions. You with me? Let's geek out. Hola amigos, Greg Basco here in my home office in Costa Rica, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about TTL Flash and some of the complexities of TTL Flash. TTL Flash can be a great choice for the nature photographer when we're moving around, when our subject is moving around, or if we're changing our camera settings. But there are some weird uh, kind of questions surrounding TTL Flash and how it really works. And so, as always, with the help of some of my hot pepper buddies like this Rocoto Manzano from Peru, delicious, crazy hot, I want to answer three burning questions. Burning questions, of course, if you're a Flash nerd like I am, and like a lot of readers and followers on YouTube have sent me these questions. So there are a lot of us Flash nerds out there, apparently. What I want to explore is whether it's better to use manual or aperture priority when you're shooting TTL Flash. I have an opinion, and I'm going to walk you through how I arrived at that opinion. The second question is, does the metering mode, you know, partial uh, center-weighted spot metering matrix evaluative, does that affect how TTL flash calculations are made? And finally, another one that's sort of a strange question, but a lot of us have it, and that is, does natural light exposure compensation affect TTL flash exposure compensation? So, let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy this deep dive of three super nerdy questions for TTL flash. Here's the first one, and it has to do with our choice of shooting mode. You know, most nature and wildlife photographers, we shoot either in manual mode or aperture priority mode, or maybe a mix of the two, depending on the situation. So it might occur to you to ask, should I shoot aperture priority or should I shoot manual mode when I'm using flash? The answer to me is always pick manual mode, and I'm gonna tell you why. In the first instance, if we're shooting flash as fill, that is, we're balancing it with the ambient light, Anytime something changes in our background, aperture priority is going to have the camera change the shutter speed to maintain a proper exposure, whatever that is. Air quotes, everybody loves them. Um, so, you know, I have my peppers here. So as I move across the scene from the pepper on black, the pepper in the middle with black and white, and the pepper on white, the exposure is going to change because the camera is going to make those calculations and start to change the shutter speed. Imagine I'm outside, and I just heard a toucan actually a little while ago here in my office just outside. Imagine I was outside shooting that toucan, and I have a forest background that's looking nice. And, you know, maybe I zoom in or out. Maybe I move closer or move farther away from the toucan. Maybe I recompose, and all of a sudden there are some dark leaves in the background. Then there are some bright leaves in the background. Well, if I'm in aperture priority, my background is going to change every time. And I don't really want that. When I'm shooting fill flash with a telephoto lens, I want to establish the tone of my background and I want it to stay the same no matter how I compose or where I move around. And in aperture priority, I'm gonna get inconsistent exposures on the background, right? Again, I want that background the same. I want it a middle tone green, a darker green, a brighter green, whatever the situation calls for or whatever my mood is for that particular picture. I want that to stay consistent and then I can use my flash to fill in on my bird or other telephoto subject, right? And that's how it works. Again, in aperture priority, that shutter speed is going to be fluctuating. Now, that can cause a couple of other problems, too, because let's say uh, your shutter speed changes and all of a sudden, you know, you have a bird that's moving around a little bit. If your shutter speed all of a sudden drops too low, then you might get some ambient blur and it might compromise that nice sharp picture you're trying to take. And another important thing is you might be floating in and out of the sync speed zone. So you might be floating in and out of high speed sync flash, which could be problematic uh, perhaps. So even when using fill flash, I much prefer manual mode so that I can lock in my background exposure and then let my flash take care of the work I need to do on the subject. Now, here's another instance um, cl more closely related to, let's say, my studio work here. Again, I'm underexposing here in the studio, so my flash is doing all of the work on my peppers. If I were trying to shoot this in aperture priority, my camera would constantly be trying to lengthen the shutter speed to allow natural light to get in. What if I'm out at night and I want to photograph a frog? Well, if I'm an aperture priority, even if I knock my exposure compensation down to minus three, even some cameras will let you do minus five, it might not be enough to eliminate any natural light, or at night, it's just gonna keep 
you know, moving you into like 30 second exposures and there, there's no reason for that kind of work with flash as the main or only light source. You want to completely underexpose the natural light and let your flash take over. Manual shooting mode allows you to do that quite easily. Aperture priority is always going to be fighting you by trying to let in ambient light. So go manual when you're flashing. So here is a simple example, a macaw portrait in Costa Rica, a uh, telephoto lens, but look how my background stays exactly the same because I've used manual exposure mode. Now, a little more complicated scenario with the Hercules beetle. Again, my background exposure is staying exactly the same because I've locked in all three of my shooting variables, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. And look at this, even a more complicated background with this uh, rattlesnake plant flower and a really, really complicated exposure background scenario with this Linda's tree frog in Ecuador. Manual mode allowed me to maintain my background exposure and use my flash to provide the proper exposure for my subject. There's no way you could do this with aperture priority, even if you tried to get fancy and use spot metering which doesn't work well with aperture priority because you'd be having to re-spot meter every time you took a picture almost. Even if you tried to use something like exposure lock, it would just be a big headache. There's no substitute for just locking in your manual exposure, keeping your background exactly how you want it, and then taking control of your flash to deal with your subject. So another question people might have is whether their choice of metering mode in their camera will affect their flash exposure. If you're shooting manual flash, it will not most definitely because remember in manual flash we set the power on the flash and that's it. The only communication between the camera and the flash is for the camera to say flash fire at the proper time when I take the picture. But what about TTL? Especially in a situation like I have here where I have my three peppers, one on a black background, one right in the middle, black and white equally, and one over on a white background. And the way I have my camera set up, F5.6, ISO 200, 1 200th of a second with my lighting in here, that picture is completely dark without my flash. So my flash is providing 100% of the light for the picture, and that means that the TTL flash calculations are wholly responsible for my image exposure. So wouldn't my choice of metering mode affect my TTL flash exposure? No, because as far as I know on every system, uh, certainly for Nikon, which I have here, and Canon, which I've used in the past, TTL flash calculations are based off of a matrix evaluative kind of average scene reading. So I don't think in a full flash situation like I have here with my, my peppers in my studio, I don't think that my metering modes will affect my TTL flash exposure. In Nikon, I have uh, four metering modes available. I have matrix, which is kind of the whole scene average one, that's called evaluative in Canon. I have center weighted, which of course gives more priority to the center. I have spot metering, which I normally use. And I have another one called spot metering with highlight priority, where it tries to protect the highlights a little more. Other cameras uh, will have another metering mode, I think called partial metering or, or something like that. But whatever, what I'm gonna do is do a quick test here. I started my test with a completely underexposed picture of one of my Rocoto Manzano peppers, and then I added in flash at a flash exposure compensation value of plus one uh, because I have those white surroundings, so that seemed like a good value. With spot metering, this is how it looks. With spot metering now with highlight priority, it looks exactly the same as I hypothesized before. When I change over, keeping all values the same, the only thing I'm varying here is the metering mode. Now with center weighted metering, again, it looks exactly the same. I'm not sure what that red spot is over on the right. And finally, in matrix metering, they all look the same. And again, that's because flash is working in matrix or evaluative metering to give the TTL reading. Finally, you might be asking yourself, does my ambient or natural light exposure compensation on my camera affect the flash exposure compensation when I'm using TTL flash? Now, it really shouldn't. I've already told you that I much prefer shooting in manual, manual exposure mode when I'm working with flash, whether that's as fill or flash as main light. And in that, in that case, except for a little Nikon quirk that I'll explain in a couple minutes, natural light exposure compensation should have nothing to do with manual camera exposure mode because we're locking in all three variables. By the way, shooting manual mode with auto ISO is not manual mode. It's just a, another priority mode that is now based around the ISO floating, okay? But that aside, 
Most often, where we might see the ambient exposure compensation affect the calculations for our TTL flash exposure compensation would be if we're shooting aperture priority. You can do it. I told you it's my preference to shoot manual, right? But I have good friends who take fantastic bird photographs, for instance, using aperture priority mode with fill flash, with TTL fill flash. It works. You just give up a little precision, right? But let's say you're out in the forest um, or out at a pond or wherever. You're shooting some birds with your big telephoto lens. You're working in aperture priority and you're dialing in some ambient exposure compensation. Is that going to affect how the flash in the camera calculate the flash exposure compensation for your TTL flash. We don't want it to, and in most systems it will not. Canon doesn't even have an option where the two would influence each other. Olympus, uh, thanks to my friend Keith Bauer who confirmed this, Olympus has an option there where they would be linked, but it's not active by default. Nikon, on the other hand, has this weird option that I'm pretty sure is activated by default, and there wasn't even an option to take this off until fairly recently, a couple of generations of cameras ago in Nikon. And so what Nikon does, they have this setting, uh, it's E3 in the uh, bracketing flash menu, but it allows you to link the ambient exposure compensation and the TTL flash exposure compensation. Um, so they'll add in to each other. Why you would wanna do that, I don't know. It's just more to keep up with, and uh, to me it's just crazy. And it could even work to a degree with manual shooting mode because Nikon actually will let the exposure compensation, natural light exposure compensation, influence the meter reading that you get when shooting full manual mode. So if you had uh, something that was middle gray and you dialed in minus one ambient exposure compensation, it would tell you that you're a stop too bright. You're not gonna get it as dark as you want. It's just weird and we wouldn't wanna use this ever. So my advice to you is in general, take that setting off in, in Nikon. Make sure the E3 is set to background only so that ambient exposure compensation and TTL flash exposure compensation are not linked in any way. That's just for Nikon shooters. For everybody else, you don't have to worry about it. And you can be pretty certain that your natural light exposure compensation will not affect your TTL flash exposure compensation calculations. One caveat, the more you darken a picture, whether in manual mode by adjusting any of the three variables, or in aperture priority by taking your natural light exposure compensation down, you're obviously cutting some of the natural light falling on your subject. So you are going to need to increase the flash exposure compensation setting on your flash to get a little more light to make up for the light that you've cut from the natural light falling on your subject, right? By the same token, the more you take your exposure compensation up or the more you brighten your natural light exposure, the less flash you'll have to dial in. But it's not actually changing how those things calculate. All right. It's always fun to geek out a little bit, isn't it? I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I sure enjoyed making it. If you want to learn more about Flash, I think you really might enjoy my new ebook, Flash for the Nature Photographer. I'll leave a link right down below. Great, great resource, really in depth, behind the scenes of how I took some of my favorite Flash images, even more technical info, lots of Flash gear info as well. And if you haven't checked out my last two videos on Flash, basic flash functions for nature photography and TTL versus manual flash for nature photography. I think you'll enjoy those as well. I'll link to them right down here. So if you like this video, give me a like. More importantly, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Take care everybody.